Last time on Power Play. This is Hamilton, you sons of bitches, not Anna. What are you doing here? I'm working for you. You're going to be my new general manager. Hamilton is who you are. I don't care who I am. You can't. What? Listen, I never missed a payment. Uh, fine, fine. You're not my father. You're my banker. Take some steam. Have a light supper. Steak, a few potatoes, you'll come back refreshed. But don't change your underwear. I don't care how much it stinks. I don't want to change the luck. You know what I mean? Got a big game tonight, boys. Big game. We're in the playoffs. Hey, looking good, guys. Not an overly friendly bunch. Well, they're a little shy, that's all. Plus, some of them think that you killed Ray Malone. How many times do I have to tell you guys that I was talking to him and he keeled over, all right? I know what happened. And since when is some steak and a few potatoes considered a light meal? Red meat clogs the system. You should be telling these guys to have complex carbohydrates, simple sugars. A steak and a few potatoes. That's what they're used to eating. That's what they should eat. Time to meet the press, Mr. Parker. All right. Complex carbohydrates, simple sugars. All right. It's weird. I'm feeling a little edgy. Could be some kind of phobia. You know, it's not like I haven't faced media scrums before either. But you know what it is? This is their first shot at the new GM. Yeah, that's what it is. Perhaps you suffer from my softophobia, the fear of mirrors. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I cannot afford to look rude in front of these people. All right. So here's the plan. Not be rude. If you see somebody at the back of the scrum, they're waving at me. I don't notice them through the crowd. Then I want you to tug on my sleeve twice. All right, my left sleeve twice. You got that? I've responded to far more complex physical instructions than that. All right, then. Let's meet the prep. Thornton from the Spectator. Where's the scrum? It's Hamilton. Um, I am the scrum. Hello out there. We're on the air. It's hockey night tonight. Tension grows. The whistle blows and the puck goes down the ice. The goalie jumps and the players bump and the fans all go insane. Someone roars, Bobby scores at the good old hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game. With a final flick of a hockey stick in one jacket. And although, of course, I shall never replace Ray Malone in the hearts of the players or the fans, I do sincerely hope that uh, they give me that opportunity. You're not writing anything down. I haven't asked you a question yet. Oh. Listen, do you have any questions, <laughs> Thornton, from The Spectator? Yeah. Uh, oh, good, good. So, you're from Hamilton. Yeah. You were a pretty good junior A player. You know, soft hands, no size. Got a girl pregnant. Left town shortly thereafter. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. What does that have to do with the playoffs? Oh, no, no, this is not for the story. This is just getting, you know, background. So you left well, town. Where did, where did you hear this stuff? Never reveal my sources. Yeah, okay. So are they accurate? Yeah, well, you know, if you say so. Look, I I'm giving you the opportunity here to respond. Don't just snipe at me. Snipe? Yeah, snipe. Thornton, I do not snipe. All right. Sorry, no offense. All right. Listen, let me ask you a question, uh, Thornton, from The Spectator. What happened to the scrum? I mean, wh where is everybody? Toronto and Buffalo, bigger places than Hamtown, Ontario. Despite the fact that Hamilton has a pretty glorious sports history, think about it. Thai Cats, the Fin Cups, the Kilty Bees. Rose! Hi! Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Excuse us. I just have a question. I have a few questions of my own. We're talking. What do you think you're doing? It's called press relations. You know, I'm the GM. It's the playoffs. There's a lot of excitement. I don't want excitement. Yeah, well, that would explain your clothes. Uh, oh, this coming from a man dressed like a gigolo. A gig? Oh. oh. <laughs> you see, you're just angry because that playoff revenue destroyed your little bankruptcy plan. The Steelheads are supposed to move to Houston, remember? 
You set it up. Yeah, that's right. And the better they do, it's the more interest in Houston. No, the better they do, the harder it gets to move them out of Hamilton. Listen, take it easy, Madam President. All right. You see, you're just nervous because we haven't lost a game yet. But not to worry. Tonight we go down big time. It's in the bag. And who's that guy over there? What guy? What guy? The only guy. The well-dressed guy. Well, he... You think he's well-dressed? Sure. He's a computer guy. All right? My whole system has crashed, so I'm, I'm, he's helping me out. In fact, I gotta go deal with him right now. Excuse me. Hey, Thornton, from The Spectator. You see the guy behind me on the couch here? Do you think he is well-dressed? Sure. Oh, God. Now, Follow. I, I actually just had one little question, so... I, I, Thank you. Harriman, why are you all dressed up? I'm not. It's just a regular suit, midweek thing, small meeting, maybe drinks, casual dinner after type thing. Yeah, well, maybe that's what it is in New York, but in Hamilton, you, you look like a, a gigolo, all right? So tone it down. Okay, damage report. Since you put the agency in trust, two clients have already quit, three are thinking about it. All right, well, stop the bleeding, tell them I'm still looking after their interests. But you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. It's illegal. You can't be general manager of a team and run a sports agency. That's why you set up the blind trust, remember? That's for public consumption. With me in that charge. That is strictly temporary. And how long do you think the steelheads are going to go anyway? Four games. And I am not about to let clients walk away from my agency over that. Now, what have you heard about Mickey Dubois? He's not as happy as he should be. I'm doomed. You think your team's gonna lose in four straight? That's kind of creepy, isn't it? Joe, how many agency clients on the Steelheads? Zero. Yeah, and how many on Philadelphia? Six. Really? Oh, no, seven. Yeah, exactly. Believe me, I know who to cheer for. Team Parker. As a young boy in Finland, I dreamed of coming to Canada to play the game that this nation gave to the world. But now, I find that young Canadian boys dream of playing in places with uh, palm trees and cactus. Hey, hey, Brainiac, what chapter are you up to? But still, the legends persist, and new ones grow. My father had some friends over to the house, uh, men he hadn't seen for years and years. And they were talking and uh, laughing and... Ah, oh, the story of the fetish. Here. What fetish? Uh, Shiki Al's lucky beer bottle. It's a fetish. That's not a fetish. Fetish is like having a thing for black patent slingbacks with five-inch heels. Suddenly, one of the men throws his empty at me. Hey, it's cute, he says. Uh, hey, little buttocks. Da bueno beer. Get me another beer. And the bottle is flying in the air, you see? And I reach out like this and I grab the bottle just before it hits the ground, very quick. The guy who threw the beer bottle says, Toddy bon me. You have good hands. And I never did. Before that, uh, I had the main plank puss, uh, hands full of thumbs. But after that, I had good hands. And the man who threw that beer bottle was Jacques Plante. Jacques Plante, the man who revolutionized gold. Reach out. Shh. He touched the bottle, guys. It will bring us good luck in the playoff. All right, boys, you heard the man. Do it. Let's not change the luck. First, call the car rental place. I reserved a luxury. They gave me a compact. I find this unacceptable. You have bigger problems than a rent. I have no problems, Joe. I have opportunities for victory. Mickey Dubois called. He's concerned that he can't talk to you. All right, that's it. You get the guy on the phone. You're not allowed to talk to him. Just get the guy on the phone. Mickey Dubois. <clears throat> Mickey, it's Joe Harriman here. Gee, Joe, it's too bad I can't legally talk to my good buddy Mickey, but you know, if I could, I'd tell him that I still love that guy, and I think about him all the time, and I'd also tell him, if I could, that when I'm finished doing what I have to do here, I'm gonna negotiate the mother of all contracts for my good buddy Mickey, a contract so sweet that in years to come, hockey players and sports agents alike shall get trembling hands and moist eyes when they even think about that deal that I made for him, my good buddy Mickey, and I'm legally bound not to say any of these things, of course, but if I could, that's what I'd say, and Joe, you've left your phone open, what the hell are you doing? Hey, Michelle. Hello, Brett. Do you have any idea how hard it is to find royal jelly in Hamilton? No, Brett, I have no idea. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's extremely hard. Is it, Brett? Michelle, you can call me Brett if you want to. You know, I, that, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I know that it's hard for you to call me dad or, you know, pop or whatever. So go ahead and you can call me Brett. You just don't have to use my name in every single sentence. Okay? 
Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So, what do you do with royal jelly, Brett? I ingest it. But you put it on toast or what? Uh, no, it comes in these ten handy ampules, and you shouldn't be drinking that coffee, you know? Yeah, well, it's the least painful way I can think of to get it into my body. Yeah, well, that's very funny, but caffeine is a drug. It's a foreign substance. It's the most popular drink in North America, Brett. Look, this as long as we're going to be living together here. Oh, come on. You're only here because it's a court-ordered thing. I mean, after the playoffs are over, how long are you really going to hang around? I, I mean, I, I have a job here now. You know, I, I gave the steelheads a commitment. Lucky steelheads. We're here, Ray. Playoffs. Huh? Yeah. I'm a little scared. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I wish you could be here too, Ray. Huh. He's a little jag off. Oh, I know. He was, a, he was a good kid, Ray, but that was a long time ago. Well, time for me to go light a fire under the boys. Wish me luck. All right, boys. Now, I know that the uh, newspapers are saying that we don't stand much of a chance. Well, hell, the uh, Philadelphia is a great team. Some people are even saying that they let us beat them in the last game so that uh, they'd get us in the first round. But they don't got what we got. Grit. And grit can take the day, boys. Because grit gets in there, and you can't get it out. That's why they call it grit. So, uh, go on out there and give me a 110%. Well, come on! Let's go! We've go got on, grit! Let's, let's go. destroy it! Let's go. Yeah! yeah. Game one of the playoffs is underway. Off the face-off, Simpson controls. Steelheads dump it into the Philly zone. Action continues in behind the net. Granger with it. Oh, Maplethorpe gives him a bump. Already a physical presence in this game. Puck is loose. Controlled by Hamilton again. To Simpson. A quick shot. Duncan there makes the save. Play continues. Philly decides to hold on. They'll get the whistle. And as you can see, a few words exchanged in the crease. Now Hamilton, Braniacki on target. Duncan makes the save again. Philly quick to turn it around across the Hamilton line. Squeezed against the board. Puck comes up. Trombley makes the save. A goalie's duel. Now, this is like old-time hockey. Too bad it's not in black and white. Go get him, Todd! Knock him into the ball! Puck loose along the board, Booth after it, now in comes Maple for these two battles battle hard. Lucasek gets in on it, but Puck is hit loose. Maplethorpe controls. He finds Braniacki. Braniacki swings it up. Takes a quick peek behind him. Finds Simpson breaking in. Simpson. Shot scores. One nothing. Hamilton. The first goal belongs to the Steelheads. And that is why they call him Simpson. Yeah. Down to the last minute of play. Philly's goaltender Duncan heads for the bench. Nelson sends out a sixth attacker. It's Lamont. Game one of this playoff still up for grab. Shot comes in, goes wide. Philly's trying to put the pressure on. Trombley gets a piece of that one. Trombley's been solid all night long. Again, Philly control to the line, looking for an opportunity. They step in. The shot, Trombley makes the save. Again, Trombley, more work for him. Shot, save. Trombley jumps on it. He holds on to it. And Hamilton will take game one. I thought we were going down big time. I thought it was in the bag. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. Wait, there's always game two. And the Steelheads have pulled it off. Yep. Sorry. Look at this. Check it out. My name is in the newspaper. Mm. Near the word indicted? No, near the word winner. You know, Hamilton Steel has a little team kicked some serious playoff butt last night. And the team won, huh? Yep. That must piss you off. What do you mean? Come on, it's not as if Hamilton means anything to you. Did you make coffee? Uh, no. Uh, coffee interferes with the body's natural electricity. Electricity, yeah, I know. Let me be clear on this. I have two modes. Either I'm asleep or I'm drinking coffee. Hey, no, that's... Please. Thanks. Court office called. They've arranged that community service that we have to do. That little ethics club scam of yours. So, get us out of it. Uh, I can't get us out of it. <laughs> what about your client who was arrested for indecent exposure? What, Wheatley? Yeah, if you can get him out of a jail term, you can get us out of some soup kitchen. Hey, Wheatley was never convicted of exposure, all right? He pled to drunken oh. disorderly. The chicken costume just didn't fasten properly, and that wasn't his fault. Oh, whatever. The point is, you're a fixer. That's what you do. You can do it for me. You mean do it for us? Do I? Oh, good day to you, Coach. Hey, Mr. McCardle, how you doing? Happy as Larry. Uh... I thought you were working the team pretty hard there at practice. Well, you know, Mr. McCarl, when they lose the game like that, you gotta make them pay the price. Uh, why don't you put them on the old medicine ball? Nobody, nobody works out with the medicine ball anymore. Medicine ball? That's Eddie Shore stuff. You play with Shore? Play for Shore. Three years in hell. I always remember that. Yeah, I used to work the medicine ball while looking at the TV. The set was on, of course. Used to watch that uh, old pig and whistle. Worked up quite a sweat watching those pasty Brits belt back the brew. You must have led a very exciting life back in those days, I'll oh, bet. Oh, God. That was the fast lane, that's for sure. Well, okay. Can't stand around talking all day. Well, I know you're a busy man. See you later, Mr. McCardle. Jeez, what a strange guy. How was that? Uh, I said, have a good day, Mr. McCardle. Yeah. Jeez, what a strange guy. The night of game two arrives. Winning rituals are observed. And the man who threw that bottle was Jacques Plant. Al, this looks like an ordinary bottle to me. It's not an ordinary bottle. Listen, guys, you know, a few of us have been doing this evolution thing. You know, we no longer believe that thunder means that the gods are angry, okay? We don't believe in, uh, in magic or luck. We believe in self-confidence and determination. Determination. Th this is the ability to... Listen, Parker, the guys are trying to get ready for the game, so you shouldn't even be here. That's odd, Mark. I was under the impression that you all work for me. That's all right, Simpson. I'll handle it. Parker, uh, the boys just don't expect the GM to be in the room right before a game, so uh, anything that I can do for listen, you... Listen, come you on, go I, ahead. I want... No, please, you go ahead, then. Take the floor. It's all yours. Boys, men, this is it. This is a. We, we've had our backs up against it before, haven't we, boys? And, and we never backed down, did we? No, coach, that's why we're a game up. That's right, coach. That's right, Todd. Because we got grit. And grit gets into places you just can't get it out. So you go on out there and you give them all you got. And then you give him a little bit more, huh? So let's go. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Guys, 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 can I just, can I just say a few words? Well, we, we, it's not gonna take a second. Gonna... Can I say a few words? I don't know how I can stop you. All right, then. Look, I know you guys gotta get out there. Listen, guys, a, a, a lot of my top clients have had great success utilizing a technique, okay? Can I have that tip? A technique called psychic compartmentalization, all right? Uh -huh. Yeah! It's actually pretty simple, Todd, okay? There's two parts to this. First of all, you visualize the moment of success, all right? The water bottles. The next thing is through a positive action, I manifest that vision as real, all right? Visualize, manifest. <laughs> huh?
Sorry, Al. Is there a problem? All right, guys, let's go. Go get it. Visualize. Manifest. All right. Give me a favorite part here. Shut up. Game two at a packed Coliseum and off the faceoff, Hamilton dumps it into the Philly zone. Hamilton looks a little jittery tonight. They seem to be off their game. Booth in across the line. He heads up the slot. Booth with the quick shot. Score! Philadelphia takes a 1-0 lead. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Shut it. Shut it. Trombley looked very weak on that one. Philadelphia leads Hamilton 1-0. Down by a goal, Hamilton's going to have to turn it on. Corbin sends out Simpson, Maplethorpe, and Braniaki. Here's Simpson intercepting. Turns, takes a look back up the ice. Swings back up, chased by Gilbertson. Here's Booth. Oh, he sends Booth over the board. Simpson controls in the corner. He cuts across the front. Quick shot scores! Simpson's tied for Hamilton. And that's why they call him Simpson. Don't they call him Simpson because his name is Simpson? Women. Philadelphia across the Hamilton line, a long shot. And it's in! Off three skate! Philly leads 2-1! Just like I told him to do it! I what a float! Philadelphia gets a lucky goal and takes the lead! Simpson line is back on the ice and he looks fired up. Controls the puck, swings around behind his own net, up the right wing door. And he's down! Oh, whoa! That's the way to hit him. Straighten him up. Is that Simpson? Joe, Joe, go on down there. Simpson in trouble after Booth nailed him. And boom, in comes Maplethorpe and grabs Booth and these two are at it. Everybody is paired up, but right now the attention's on Booth and Maplethorpe while Simpson lays on the ice. Well, this kind of action makes Jake Nelson happy. Finally, the linesman will jump in and settle in. Booth and Maplethorpe finally cleared away. Hamilton penalty to number 22, Todd Maplethorpe. Five minutes for fighting. Time, 1956. So we go into the third shorthanded for five. I'd say this ain't our lucky day. Is Simpson all right? Oh, yeah. Take a lot more than that to stop old Simpson. Look, I'm, I'm all right, all right? I was never out. And why didn't you get up right away? I was trying to grab some rest, all right? I was trying to get the ref to call a major on Philly. What's the date today? It's the 22nd. It's the 21st. For another three hours, big deal. Look, coach, I'm fine, all right? Guys, listen up. There is no such thing as luck. Oh, yeah? Then why are my hands suddenly so bad? Your hands are not bad. You're bad. Enough of the pep talk, Parker. No, no, what, what I mean is your, your hands are a part of your body, Al. Listen, you have to believe in yourselves. Now I want you to get out there and kill that penalty. Yeah, boys. B, then C. That C, then B. Get out of here, Parker. All right, all right. Hamilton starts the third period, a man down. Maplethorpe serving the major. He's gone five minutes, and the Philly power play goes to work. They try to take advantage of the extra man. OJ dumps the puck, sidesteps the check. Franklin gets the puck to the point. Philly taking its time, trying to work this. Simpson is out, killing the penalty. Philly controls, quick shot, scores, beats Trombley. Shoot the puck, keep shooting, keep shooting. Let's go, let's go. Take a bad bounce, don't worry about it. My hands are not good. No, my stick is not good because it just held in my hands. No, 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 we can still win this, okay? Just get us through this five minute major. It's just about four and a half minutes left, okay? Off 
the face off. Philly controls. Again at the point. They work. Shot comes in. They score! Another one. Philly scores! Scores! Philadelphia! Trombley is off his game. No doubt about it. I did it again. Way to go. Way to go, guys. Philly bags game two. A loss. That's better. Yeah, see, like I said, it's in the bag. Hey. Well, that's the sorry a debacle as I've ever been involved in, and I've been involved with some mighty sorry debacles. Have you ever heard of line changes? What? Line changes. It's this crazy new theory that the longer the game goes on, the more tired the players get. So you change up the lines more than once every two and a half minutes. Now, you listen to me. I have been coaching since you were in diapers. And I don't appreciate I, I, I don't need, I, I don't want you coming in here trying to tell me my business. Now, you know as well as I do why we lost. Oh, because I broke the sacred beer bottle and I made the gods angry? What, you making everybody else around here angry? Why not the gods, too? You gotta update your knowledge base, Gorman, because knowledge is power, power is respect, and respect motivates. The boys respect me plenty. Is that what you think, Lloyd? What happened the last game, anyway? Listen, nothing happened, okay? They just, you know, they lost, which is, if you'll remember, all a part of the plan. Three more losses and life goes back to normal. The Steelheads moved to Houston and I returned to the kingdom of riches and plenty. Now, the car rental place says my luxury will be ready for tomorrow, so trade in that rinky-dink compact they gave me and I'll call you from the airport. Why don't I just come with you to Philadelphia? Why would I take a computer guy to Philadelphia? Fix your computer? I heard that. <sighs> I guess fixing computers is pretty taxing work. Uh, can be. I was here most of the night. You think you can come and take a look at my system? I don't see why not. You come to the right place. That's good, and I nearly fell off the catwalk three times trying to get here. The brewing shift that worked mornings in the month of January in the year 1959 was the best ever assembled. Their product was accordingly the sweetest. I therefore laid in the stock. I hate to lose one of them. Still, for the sake of the team. You just want the bottle. Correct. Excellent. Anything for the team. Well, a little skunky, but still very worthwhile. Not a lot of memory, but lots of speed here. Hope you can handle it. You're not a computer guy, are you? Sure I am. I know a lot about computers, don't I? Lots of people know a lot about computers. But a real computer guy would have pointed out by now that there's nothing wrong with my computer. So, why don't you tell me who you really are? <laughs> Keep the change. <laughs> Brett Parker. Hey. Hey. Andrea. I miss you, Andy. A heavenly Hampton hideaway. A what? Oh, it sounds perfect. Oh. Yeah, that sounds great. What, what is that? It's a house, Maroon. A house in the Hamptons. Where we could hide away and it would be heavenly. Oh, it would be so great. The thing is, uh, things are a little bit hectic right now. Look, you know what, Parker? Spare me. I don't ask for much, and I put up with a lot. I know, I know. Look, here's the thing. We have two games left in Philadelphia, all right? 
Who? We, you know, as in the steelheads. I remember when we meant you and me. It does. It, it does. Listen, well, why, why don't you squeeze in to visit when I'm in Philly? Hey, I've got a career, too, you know. Why don't you come up and see me? Look, they're calling the gate, all right? I got to go. I'm going to call you when I get there, OK? Oh, Peter, don't you feel anything? Kisser will return Kisser. to Love Mountain. Peter Preston is such an idiot. I mean, can't he see how great Cindy is? I mean, why can't he get over that thing with Vic? I mean, it, it was nothing. It was... Hey, Todd, you know what? No. Oh, you think it meant something to no, her. No, 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 no. Forget about that. What I was going to say was, uh... You know, the coach. What about coach? He's not hacking it. We split the first two games. That's not bad, and... It's not Coach's fault that Trombley's bottle broke. It's that New York weasel Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is the coach's fault that our, our breakouts are, are primitive. It's the coach's fault that we can't kill penalties, you know? I think I smelled something at the skate this morning. On his breath. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about, Todd. Coach quit drinking. It was, it was probably just mouthwash. Yeah, a single malt mouthwash. Listen, Brainiac, everybody's... A little scared, all right? I mean, I'm a little scared. You're a little scared. I am not scared. You're scared. No, I am not scared. If you don't admit you're scared, I'm gonna punch you in the head. Well, that's no good New Year, then I would be scared. Listen, Coach will do fine. We just gotta help him out a little, that's all. Maybe. Okay, uh, what, what's your name again? Doesn't matter. All right, look, you're, you're a legend, remember? Okay, so don't say anything. Just, uh, just stand there and look, uh, look lucky. Okay, here he comes. He's the guy in the green jacket, all right? Okay, fire. Hey, little buttocks. Hey, Al, nice catch. Listen, Al, I'd like you to meet someone. Alphonse Tremblay, I'd like you to meet Lionel Becker. Hello. Don't play us for fools, Mr. Parker. What do you mean? You're telling us that this is D. Lionel Becker. Yeah. Who is D. Lionel Becker? You don't know who Lionel Becker is. Uh, lucky Lionel Becker. Many people consider him the greatest goaltender of all time. Sorry, I've uh, never heard of him. Well, it's because he only played for one season. He uh, played for Toronto in 1949, and he won them the cup. Then he quit forever. <sighs> But during that season, he was the best, maybe the luckiest that ever played. Toronto. I hate that. Lucky Lionel Becker. The man. La Legendaire. Oh, great. Just great. Good catch. Thanks, you guys. Oh, no problem. I did it for the team. Yeah. Uh, and those seven tickets. Yeah. And uh, the dinner at the fancy restaurant. Um, fancy restaurant. Right. Thanks. Couldn't I play for Oakland? Uh, I like their offense. Whatever, Bill. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bill. Myron. Myron, whatever. You can head back down to the bar now. How about Al Trombley? I don't know what happened to him, but he is magic out there tonight. <laughs> Trombley's been the whole story here this evening. An incredible shutout performance. give our regards to Broad Street. We came and gave some people. Hey, Mr. Parker, we won. Yeah, I know that, Todd. I was at the game. Only I got back here hours ago. Mr. Parker, don't tell anyone, but we had a little bit of a celebration. I can't believe you guys have been drinking. I mean, now look at you. You've destroyed brain cells. You've lost muscle tone and resiliency. We are in the middle of a playoff series here. What would the coach say? Give my regards to old Broad Street and tell him Parker is up. Hey, Parker, good news. We won. Everything's going to be just fine. And the best game you can name is a good old hockey game. And 
after another surprise victory, the Steelheads chart a home up 3-1 in the series. But somehow, the moon is uneasy. There she is. Do you have any insight as to why Coach Gorman shook up the lines when he was ahead? I don't know. I have to ask Gorman that. I did. He just stared at me like he didn't know what I was talking about. Well, yeah. Well, you can't argue with results, can you? We're up three games to one. I know. I, I know all that. So... If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You're either really evasive with me or else you, you say these, these, these glim, little inanities. Thornton? What? Don't snipe. Aha. Uh -huh. Excuse me. What's going on, Lloyd? You can't remember where you parked your car, can you? Oh, look, Parker, what you saw the other night, you know, that yeah. was just a one-time thing, just blowing right? off a little steam, that yeah. was all. What are you doing? You know, if Ray Malone was here right now, if he was standing here, you know what he'd say to you? He'd say, Gorman, you got no you right got to straight for Ray That's Malone, you say. You got a responsibility. Hey, 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 hey! Do you lift, coach? No, oh, I'm having a conversation with the coach, Todd. Yeah, well, I'm giving the coach a lift, and I'm leaving now, so you can have your conversation later, OK? Can I drop you somewhere, Rose? See? Yeah. No, thanks. Someone's there. <laughs> picking me up. Me too. I'll see you later. Parker. Thornton from The Spectator. Do you see your your involvement with Hamilton as a, a long-term kind of ongoing commitment? What is this? A car. Hey, yeah, where, where is my luxury? They didn't have a luxury, they had this. You, so, but what was the point of this? You traded in a compact for a subcompact? It's got four doors. Just forget, just squeeze yourself back in there. We're going to that counter right now. Ta taxi. Colleen's on to me. What, she knows who you are? She knows I'm not a computer guy. Okay, that's okay. I'll think of something. She's no match for me. I don't know about that. Hey, listen, I, I got it already, all right? You're a sports psychologist. Why? Okay, and the reason why we kept that secret is you've been observing the team clandestinely. That's not bad. It's good. That's very good. I'm very good. This is bad. This is very bad. Want to go over to the sportsman's and get a couple of beers, huh? You don't drink, coach. You've been on the wagon for years. Oh, yeah, that's right, Todd. Uh, you know, I... Fell off the wagon the other night. But I picked myself right back up, climbed right back on it, and I swear to God. That's good, Coach, because we need you. Yeah, I know you do, son. You know, because, like, Philly changed their patterns in the third. You know, they were coming at us hard, and where does my man go, Coach? I mean, he, he keeps disappearing. Huh? The one I'm supposed to cover, my man. I look up, and he's not where he's supposed to be. I'm not really sure, Todd. Well, then, you look at the game tapes, and you figure it out. And you come tell us, because they outplayed us bad in the third. And none of us understand, and we're scared. I thought we should demarcate our territories. You see, this way, we both have our own entrances. I come in the back, and you come in the front. I see. You know, I realize it makes it a little difficult for you to get into the kitchen, but seeing as you don't actually eat anything that could be identified as food... It's fine. It's okay. It's fine. I'm just gonna go to the bedroom. Can I get into the bedroom? Sure. Great. Good night. Oh, uh, this Andrea person called? Oh, God. Yeah, I, I told her you forgot all about her. Oh, well, thanks for covering for me there, Shell. Well, you did, didn't you? Forget all about her? Yes, I did. So then? And what did she say? She laughed. 
Well, there you go. She laughed. See, she laughed. No harm done. Now, just because she laughed doesn't mean she didn't mind. Listen, you know nothing about this relationship, all right? I used to laugh, too, when you'd send all those dumb birthday presents. I mean, I guess they weren't all that dumb, but, uh... But they were always at least, like, two years out of date, so that when I was five, I'd get books with only pictures in them, even though I could read when I was four. And, and when I was seven, I, I got this hat that would fit maybe like a, like a pinhead. And, and when I was 11, I, I got this pink frilly dress, even though I was wearing jack shirts and army pants at the time. And, and when I was 15, I got The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which I read when I was seven. Seven, for God's sakes. And I used to laugh. But that doesn't mean I didn't mind. Michelle, you, you could have said something. Yeah, I could have. But would you listen? Would you listen, please? What? Uh, what did you say? I said, take the scholarship. Leave Hamilton, go to Providence. I can have this baby on my own. I don't need you around here. May, I'm, I'm offering to get married here. I'm, I'm offering to do the right thing. And what makes it right? That you ruin yourself and ruin me too? I don't want to marry you. How about that? So I, I, I wanted to be a part of this. We have made a huge mistake, okay? And if you stay here, we are going to end up kicking each other in the butt every day for the rest of our sad, sorry lives. So go, get out. What? What did you say? I said, if you're hungry, you can use my entrance into the kitchen. Oh, no, uh, no. Thank you, I'm, I'm not hungry. Thanks. A huge game looms. And everyone wonders, will the luck hold? Will the coaches make the right moves? Will the players overcome their personal struggles? Will management uncertainty affect the players? No, 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 face it, Parker. You've lost control. We are on the verge of going into the second round, and that is very bad for business. Listen, it's the last game. It's always the hardest one to win. You are talking like you're 12 years old. Can the luck hold? Big game tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there. You have kids, Mark? Yeah. Yeah, I got a boy. Andy. How about you, Parker? You got any kids? Uh, there's two schools of thought on that. Huh? Uh, yeah, I have a daughter. Uh, she's 17. Very beautiful. Smart. You're a lucky guy, Parker. Look, I, uh, I better get going there. Waiting for me at home. Yeah. Hey, Mark. How's the head? Hard as rock. <laughs> I was worried there for a while you might have a concussion or something. No. Don't worry about me. 